Cheers, guys. Epix911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR news for August 1st. So before we jump into the news, a uh, little bit of the usual preamble. I had mentioned uh, a few days ago that this upcoming week I will be away in New York on a business slash vacation trip. The business part being a 12, almost 14 hour IT conference uh, where I basically have to give a presentation pretty much at the tail end of. So you can imagine uh, IT stuff is dry to begin with. The eyes will be fully glazed over 12 hours later, right? When I get to uh, stand up and deliver mine. So that'll be interesting, but the rest of it, checking out all those touristy things that I've always wanted to do because I've never been able to explore New York City. I've always passed through as, you know, somebody going to Europe or coming back, right? Uh, or going to a hub somewhere else. So being able to see stuff like Central Park, Coney Island, Times Square, totally looking forward to it. What I would love is if there's any of you who either live there or have visited there a good local brew, something that would be associated kind of the island of Manhattan or hell, greater New York, right? A beer that would be synonymous with that because not only will I try it, I'll bring a bunch back with me if I end up liking it. So if you do know of one, let me know in the comments below. As for the flying, I did something I haven't done for a long time. I hate flying, by the way. I'm not a good flyer. Um, I know logically it's the safest way to travel, but logic in my brain with the fear, uh, yeah, it doesn't always work out that way. So I always keep myself busy. So I bought the first 2D game that I've purchased probably in about four months, and that is Dragon Code for the 3DS. So we will be playing that on my Mugen-powered new 3DS which has about a 15 hour battery life. So I'm in no worry about that. I can bury myself into that game, which is supposedly a decent RPG. Because the alternative guys, having one of these in an airplane, probably scare the hell out of people. Uh, not saying it couldn't be done, just I'll probably pass. Almost guaranteed to go into virtual reality withdrawal, but hey, <laughs> there you go. I will try to keep the news videos coming. It all depends on the wired connection in the hotel. I'm going to basically use my gaming laptop slash work laptop as a hotspot because my wife has mostly Mac stuff, right? No Ethernet ports. And if the bandwidth is good enough and I have the time, I will obviously upload news. If not, it may unfortunately have to wait till I get back. But hopefully... I'll have some games scheduled to come out over those days. So uh, other than that, looking forward to it, not so much the seminar part, but the, uh, the looking around. Now, just one last thing before we jump into the news, and it has to do with VR multiplayer. David Jagno, who is an author, uh, editor rather, on Upload VR, had a really cool Star Trek Ubisoft Bridge Crew simulator experience. Basically, he was one of four people on the bridge cooperatively playing a mission, right? And I got a good chuckle out of seeing it because the ultimate irony is everybody had one of these on. They didn't have to be in the same room. Obviously, it was for the purpose of the demo, but the quick point that it drove home to me is, wow, like this is multiplayer where people are sitting a thousand kilometers away and yet can see each other, right? On-screen avatars, but you get the gist of what I'm saying. They can still see each other and work cooperatively towards a goal. So the potential for multiplayer in VR has only begun to be tapped. We talked about it before. We will talk about it again because we're going to see all this cool stuff start to unfold as we move forward into this awesome VR journey. Now, on to the news. Uh, the camera... <laughs> that was used for Suicide Squad, 360 degree, uh, degree camera, looks hilarious. I'm gonna have the link below, check it out. It basically looks like from the medical TV drama house, one of those comical hospital neck braces, right? It, it looks ridiculous, check it out. But it got me thinking, what's available out there for 360 degree cameras? 
So I took a look and came up with kind of two different extremes, one at the professional level and then one kind of at the uh, consumer hobby enthusiast level, right? And on the high end, you've got a camera called the Nokia Ozo. It's a $60,000 virtual reality camera. So obviously, if you're a film studio, drop in the bucket. For you or me, not a drop in the bucket. So what was available? And there was quite a few, and one of them caught my interest. It's called the Gyroptic. It's basically 500 US, but offers 360 degree. And where that is so cool to me is for home family videos, right? Now, my parents had the eight millimeters, right? So I've got footage of myself as a kid on eight millimeter tapes, which had no sound, but were color. And they were like two to 10 minutes long generally, right? My generation was the camcorder generation. In the 80s, we had camcorders, big shoulder-mounted behemoths, right? And then eventually to the HD ones that we have now. But this is for the next generation, people having families now. Imagine you get a 360-degree camera. And one of my 8-millimeter home videos from when I was a kid was of me playing in a tree fort. How cool would it be for the next generation or the current one to look back 20 years from now and have a similar video where they're trucking around in a tree fort with eight-year-old version of yourself. <laughs> that would be awesome because I get the grainy eight millimeter, no sound. Future generations are going to have that kind of level of immersion as if you're there in the room with your prior self. Just mind-blowing potential. Really, really cool. On to the next bit. This has to do with NVIDIA and their 970s. Now, quite a few of you have had only praise for your 970s with VR. You found the right settings and the sweet spots, and you're happy with it, right? But just as many of you, if not more, have complained about your 970s. And where this story ties in is NVIDIA just settled on a lawsuit. And the lawsuit had to do with their claim of four gigabytes of GDDR memory. In actual fact, they only had three and a half. The remaining half a gigabyte was made up of 80% slower RAM. So hugely deceptive. But that got me thinking there must be VR implications because with virtual reality, the requirements don't go down. They either stay the same or they go up, right? So with a 2D game, you had to hit that sweet spot with your 970. Maybe it was ultra textures, right? Um, that brought your card into that three and a half to four gig area and performance suffered as a result of it. Same concept with virtual reality. So I'm gonna run some tests. It'll be one a future video where I'm going to look at several VR games with maximum cranked options or medium and let you know memory-wise where they fit, where they stand, right? How much GPU memory is actually being used? It'll be an interesting exercise to see because then you'll know, you know, directly where you are impacted by that false advertising. So really curious about that. Like I said, I'll start that probably the week that I get back. But yeah, they have to pay basically 30 bucks per person that you know, you got to fill out some paperwork, probably show receipts, that sort of thing, proof of purchase. But the number they put on it was $30 for being deceptive, right? And that's where it sucks that we basically have a monopoly, right? We've got AMD and we've got NVIDIA and that's it. And if you're one of those people who wants to vote with your wallet, well, you you shoot yourself in the foot because you don't get to buy the fastest card, which right now is kind of on the NVIDIA side of things, right? Because what's your alternative? You go to Intel and then it would be like, yeah, you get the gist. You're not going far with Intel on board, right? VR wise. So the next news article deals with witnessing virtual surgery. And we've talked about VR for training, how cool the potential is on this channel. Case in 
point with this story. Imagine, it was only a hundred years ago where med students would sit in an auditorium, right? You may be that med student. You were 30 rows up. The professor of anatomy is cutting into a cadaver on a table slab, 30 rows in front of you, and pointing out parts of the circulatory system, right? Can't see a freaking thing. Now with virtual reality, you have arguably the best seat in the house. In fact, you probably have a better vantage point than the surgeon performing the surgery, right? So I thought that was really cool. It's a hernia surgery. I don't know how exciting that would be as a VR experience, but from a future training perspective, it's awesome. That'll be in the link below. The next and last story has to do with MacKunk's VR. And these guys had a Kickstarter. They have expertise in mnemonic learning systems. And one of those is an old Greek Roman one called Method of Loki, which is in modern speech, the memory palace, right? And the technique, it's a mnemonic technique, and it basically, the gist of it is, you memorize a topic, a language, by visually compartmentalizing them, right? Like in a large palace estate. So you could have the courtyard is this, that room is that. It's a way to organize your memories to learn more efficiently, learn more effectively. They've now applied this to virtual reality. So you literally have a virtual memory palace where you can store ideas, thoughts, languages, and learn that way. Very freaking cool. It wasn't a massive Kickstarter, but it was large enough to, you know, show the potential, right? So hopefully that'll take off because that's an area where, let's face it, we are going to also see more of. And yet again, just another example of why I don't think VR is going to fail this time around. That's it for the news, guys. Hopefully I'll have some more for you this week. But as always, cheers. Have an awesome one.